Yo, yo, welcome Brainiacs. Welcome to the Job Studying Tendro Video Hour. But it's not an hour. <sighs> One of these days, I tell ya. All right, so standard deviation. Uh, measure of variation describes how how the data is spread out, and we've talked about two of those already. When we did box and whisker plot, we talked about range and interquartile range. This is another kind, and in fact, I think it's probably more commonly used. Yes, oh yeah, this is a very common one in everyday businesses and everywhere. Stats, tons of stats, probability classes, all sorts of stuff. Right. Standard deviation shows how much the data varies from the mean, and the symbol that we use for that is the lowercase Greek letter sigma. The little swooshy O there. I like sigma. I like your description. Swoosh. <laughs> the variance, that's another measure of uh, variation, it's equal to the standard deviation squared. So when you are looking at symbols, that would be sigma squared. Okay. Also, now, let's look at some of these symbols. Yeah, these are some of these are old, some of these are new. So the symbol for the mean is an X with a line over the top. Okay. So now whenever you see that, that means find the mean, or you can use that to notate your mean. We just talked about that one, standard deviation. Swoosh. Sigma. Yeah, I will say, if you ever like, Google this, sometimes you'll see formulas that use the letter S. I think it's because they, they don't have the Greek alphabet or something. Maybe. Yeah, but just be aware, sometimes that happens. What about that thing? Hmm, I remember that. That's also sigma, but it's capital sigma. Okay, and that means find the sum of stuff. For instance, how do you find the mean? You add up everything, or take the sum of all of them, and divide by how many there are. Oh, look how fancy that was. Ooh, that's smart. Yeah. Variance is equal to sigma squared. So remember, if you're looking at some other formulas in online or things like that, s squared. And then my last one, this is just a refresher. Whenever we refer to the end value, that's the number of um, data values. Yeah, data values in the sample or whatever. Okay. All right, go ahead and hit pause. This is calculating standard deviation and variance by hand. We're going to do that together in the video using those formulas. And uh, we'll show you in class how to do the calculation. And welcome back. <laughs> This is sigma. I got these pictures off the internet. That's why they look like uh -huh. S, B, and S. This is sigma squared because it's the variance. Got it. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to follow those steps with a pretty simple data set and do the calculation. So six data values in our set. We're supposed to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. Lots of things to find. Let's get organized. Let's do a little chart. All right. So the data values are those things. These were given in order, but I will tell you it's not necessary to have them in order. But for some of us who are a little type A, type A, we need them in order, yes. So the mean. Oh yeah, we need to know the mean. That's the, the other thing. So how do you find the mean? You add them all up. Okay, so what is the sum I of those values? Up, uh, I get 419. Okay, so she got that from adding the x values together and then divide and by... Six of them, so divide by six. 69.8 is the mean. When she rounded. Good. So this is one of our answers already. We got that. Sweet. All right. How about the next column? What are we supposed to do there? Find We're finding the difference between the number, the number and the mean, right? That's right. what that means in the math number language. Number under our first column. Yeah. Minus the mean. So like the first one is 52 minus 69.8. And I'll do that. I get uh, negative 17.8. Okay, so we're going to repeat that with all the rest of these. 63 minus 69.8. Negative 6.8. Okay. And then negative 4.8. Now those are all negative because they're all below 69.8. That makes sense. We're on the left side of that of the number line. Okay. Right. Then 77, 7.2, 10.2, and 12.2. All right, now that's not all we need to do. The next step is to then take those numbers we just got So the purpose of squaring it, if you square a negative, it's going to turn to a positive. So we're trying to get that positive value there. All right, so square that first one, 316.84, then 46.24. <laughs> My decimals are ending up way up high. Those are decimal points, sorry. 183.04, <laughs> okay. 51.84, 56.84,
Getting that third column is to then apply the little formula. Which yeah, says the sum of all those. Okay, so we would want to, we're finding variance right now. You could use letter B if you would like. That is the sum of all of those things we just found and then divide by the number of n values. All right, so I've been adding those up. I got 690.84 and then n was 6. Okay, that didn't change. I see that. And then I did that, I got 115.14. Okay, that's variance. So we now found our second answer that we were responsible for. Okay. And then remember the relationship between sigma and sigma squared is the square. So we want to then square root variance, or square root the 115.14, and uh, I got 10.7. Okay, so this is our final answer for standard deviation. Standard deviation, variance, and then mean the mean was at the very beginning. Alright, so putting up the columns really helps you out. I see. Nice. I like your organization. For the next thing, we're going to have you write down these steps, uh, and then we will actually go through the, the typing Process. in class, just because it would be way easier than trying to show you in the video. I will point out that we want to use population standard deviation, and in the calculator that is sigma x. You do not want to use sx. Okay. All right, we'll do more with that in class. So copy that down. Yeah, hit pause, go ahead and get those. And we're back. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last concept we need to do, we're just going to describe some data and a list. So how we're going to use standard deviation to measure the spread of data. Gotcha. All right, so in a data list, every value falls within some number of standard deviations of the mean. The more standard deviations you have in your data, the more spread out your data is. Right. All right, so an example, if the mean of some data is 50 and the standard deviation of, is 10, then a value within 40 and 60 is within one standard deviation. Right, and the standard deviation is just kind of an idea to, to figure out a tolerance of something. Okay. If you're measuring some, you know, piece of metal that you have to put in a building and then you want the tolerance to be one standard deviation of its length, that means it can't be above, in this case, 60 or below 40. If it is, you got to throw it out and start over. Okay. All right, so we have an example for you before you get writing. Let me just talk about what all this means. It says the table displays number of hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean from 1992 to 2006. So the number that's listed in the second row is the actual number of hurricanes. This row, on the other hand, that's just telling you what year it happened. It's just helping to organize. Yeah, so 1992 is like the first year, 93 is the second year. Those numbers in the first row are not really important. The actual data that we're looking at is coming from here, the number of hurricanes. Right. So go ahead and get that stuff copied down. Just make a little list. You don't even really need a table. And then for time's sake, I have pre-calculated. Good job. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we know the mean is 7.2 hurricanes. The standard deviation is 3.316. Oh. <laughs> Within okay. how many standard deviations of the mean do all of the data values fall? All of them. Okay. So we're going to make a little picture to help us. Ooh, magic. <laughs> That's called math magical. All right, number line, and we are going to plot all of the numbers of hurricanes from the years on here. So you want to read those to me? Sure. So we can either figure out how many of each and just put X's, or I'll just read them off and you put X's above it. How about that? Okay. So I see a four. Okay, I'm putting a little mark there. Four. Another one. Three. Three. Eleven. Ten. Three. Ten. Eight. Eight. Nine, four, seven, nine, fourteen, and five. 14's a bad year. 14 hurricanes? Yeah. Whew. 
All right, that is the plotting. Uh, we are going to also mark where the mean appears. So remember, I already did that calculation for you. The mean is 7.27. So we're going to find about where that appears on our graph. And I'm going to even label it because we're going to do some stuff with that in a moment. Okay. Next, we're going to mark intervals of standard deviation so that we can find out how many intervals it takes to include all the data. All right. So how do we do that? So I need to add 3.3 or subtract it from the mean to get either side of each uh, standard deviation on either side. So what would you like to do first? I want to subtract. Okay, so she's finding the lower standard deviation one away. All right, so I subtract and I get 3.954. Okay, so that's about right here. I'm going to put a label on it to 3.954, you said. And remember, this means one standard deviation away from the mean. We clearly have not included all of the data. Okay, now I'm going to add 727 plus 3316, and I get 10.586. So that's one standard deviation this way, 10.586. Clearly have not included all of the data. Okay. So we better keep going. So left, if I subtract 3.3 again, I get 0.638. That's two standard deviations away, and that does take care of... Um, the left side. So let's check out the right. If I add 3.3 again, I get 13.9. You think we have 13.9 of a hurricane? We could just count that as good. <laughs> I think we better not yeah. assume. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, so we have not included this darn little scary year where there were 14 hurricanes. But do we really have to add it again? No, I think we can. I think we can. Safely assume. assume. Yes, that, that a third standard deviation would include that. So we are supposed to say how many standard deviations include all of the data values. So three, because we need to go three to the right to get all of them in there. So even though we only had to do two on the left, still got to go to find them all. We need three because we got to go one more here to include everything. Uh, I occasionally will have students think that the answer is five because they measure oh. all three on one side and two on the other. It's always a measure on each side. So it's good to know. Yeah. So last thing, of course, we're going to do some application type things. It says, how might the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency <laughs> use this information? So. Uh, well, we just found, remember, our year, our sample was over 15 years, and we found that the mean number of hurricanes was 7.27, so that might allow us to make some predictions. And we also found that within 15 years, um, everything appears within three standard deviations. Right. So, so they can prepare, they can figure out, okay, in that many years, how much money should we save up yeah. to fix things after the hurricane goes through, or how many... Uh, Evacuation practices do we need to do? That kind of thing. So help make some predictions. Right. Yeah, clearly uh, I don't think it's safe for us to say we've got 30 hurricanes, you know, that's outside of our data set. Right. Okay. All right. Very good. Ta-ta for now.